Welcome to Console Cowboys. In the previous videos, we covered various types of attacks against SAML, including parser attacks with XXE, how to directly assume another person's identity by changing their ID values. We discussed improper settings to bypass timing or reuse old assertions, and how SAML functions and the various parts of the request and response processes work. In this video, we'll finish off the series by talking about signature wrapping attacks, or as they are coined, XSW, because we love acronyms for everything. Essentially, signature wrapping attacks bypass signature validation of SAML assertions. This is done because the service provider does not check for multiple assertions. By sending more than one assertion within a SAML message, we're able to confuse the service provider. We are able to have our valid assertion pass through with an invalid assertion that then assumes the identity of another user. When engaged with a penetration test involving SAML, make sure you ask your client contact for an extra username, which is valid on the system for testing purposes. You won't need the credentials for this user, but you do need another user name that is valid. This attack sounds a bit complicated, when in reality, it's not that hard. It comes down to copy pasting an assertion in various points of the SAML message, then modifying one of the assertions to the desired user account you want to hack into. Kind of like modifying the ID in the original attack, but this time in a second assertion. Each application handles things a little bit differently, so one order of operations may work in one app, but not work in another app, and there's various places we can put these. But the great thing is, Burp handles a lot of this stuff for us. SAML Raider has various attacks numbered XSW1 through 8, shown in the interface here. SAML Raider will add signatures based on the current signature setup. It places these assertions in various places within the SAML message. Here I have a vulnerable application to XSW attacks that's in a VMware instance I got from some very smart guys at Bochum University. This is a simple attack you can add to your list of things to try when up against the SAML authentication portal, mostly because in my experience, half of the time they are vulnerable. Even well-known public applications by well-known online services I have tested have been vulnerable to this signature wrapping attack. You will see here that I'm logging into the application as the username attacker. I'll scroll up through here. You'll see that there's an email address of attacker. And if I scroll all the way up, you'll notice there are no other assertions in this message. So I'm going to pass this through. Take a look, and I'm logged in as an attacker. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to log out of the application. I am going to clear my history as SAML instances tend to hold their cache, remain logged in, so you need to clear everything out. Then I'm going to launch it again and capture it. I will log in as the attacker again. I'm going to pass it through until I see the SAML assertion and verify that I'm trying to log in as an attacker. And I'll try a few of these XSW attacks. The first one says that the XML message is not suitable for this particular XSW, so we'll try some others. And here it says the XSW attack was applied correctly. So if we scroll up, you'll see that our attacker is here in our first assertion. If we keep going up, you'll see that there's more content in here this time, and there is a second assertion with the email address attacker. If we modify this to admin and we pass it through, Let's take a look at the web page, and now it says we're logged in as the administrator. It should be noted that we do not have the admin user credentials. We only validated as the normal user's credentials, attacker, but we are given access to the admin user's account using the signature wrapping attack. When multiple assertion bodies are provided to the service provider with a signature wrapping attack, after the identity provider authenticated our user, we're able to confuse the service provider, and then we're able to gain access to the additional user's account that we provided. In this case, admin. So how is this attack able to happen, and how do we prevent it? Well, a big thing is the lack of schema validation. One problem is that developers assume that what comes back from the identity provider is going to be valid. 
they assume it will have the same number of assertion bodies and signature values. Everything will be of the same length, etc., since it was verified by the identity provider. But when you're passing values through a user-controlled connection, it's like trusting JavaScript validation on your local client. A very bad assumption. Everything must be validated on the server side. A lot of the mitigation strategies with XML come down to validating XML schema with known good formats. You will want to define your schema as precisely as possible. I hope this video was helpful and adds another tool to your authentication hacking arsenal. If you learned something today, subscribe to the channel below, and as always, smash the like button. Thank you for watching Console Cowboys.